Welcome to the Donor Explore channel. Hey everybody, my name is Brian. Thank you so much for coming to our channel here, Donor Explore, to learn about all things travel and hiking the world. And in today's video, we're gonna to jump to what you want to know about, which is, how do you find the best travel itinerary when you're going to the BVIs? Well, in my opinion, you crowdsource it, you find people who've done it before. And in this situation, we did just that. One of my family members, or two actually, had been there about five or six times and had done this Marine Max 44 experience, kind of sailing around or motoring around the BVI. So today's video, we're gonna share with you or bring you along with us exploring the BVI on our five day boating experience to the destinations we chose. So let's dive into it. So yeah, we just took the boat from Red Hook, took Island Time Taxi here, took us all the way over to one of the locations where you can check in at Customs. I think it's Road Town is what it's called today. Basically having everything from your passport to your vaccine card, your negative COVID test. Damn cool. <laughs> so cool, I left the suitcase. So here we are, day two. We are on our Marine Max 484 here in the British Virgin Islands. This was the infamous Willie T's, a place to grab a bite, have some drinks, and of course, jump off the back of the boat. So if you're looking for some afternoon fun, Willie Tees is it. Whether you're staying docked in the morning bowl like we were at Norman Island or somewhere not too far away, you can come here for a couple hours, have some food, drinks, jump off the boat, and just really enjoy the afternoon. Day two on the trip here, technically full day one on the boat, and I'm just thinking this is epic. This was it, Norman Island, our first stop. After getting back from Willie T's, we decided to just enjoy the boat. Some stand up paddle boarding, flying the drone, going for a swim, just taking in these epic views. I really enjoyed them and I hope you all do too. We showered up and took the dinghy over to Pirate's Bite for our dinner that night on Norman Island. Good morning from the start of day three on our Marine Max vacation here in the BBIs. So yeah, we're gonna have brekkie here in the morning, grab some coffee, some eggs, some bacon, and then set sail. Try to find some turtles. Only one turtle was found, so we're gonna leave Peter Island here. Just see here behind us. We're gonna head over to Cooper Island. So here we go. See you guys over there. So this is Cooper Island. 
You could bring your dinghy in and grab a drink right here and there's some food. A little bit down further yonder, you can go to the gift shops and or check out the dive store there. Uh, and of course, if you're staying in the resort, you can use all these facilities. We just kind of bopped around this day and then headed back out into the ocean to try our luck again. To go try to find some turtles and then head on our way. slip here at the marina at scrub island for the night we'll be staying here with everybody and we're gonna jump off right now and check out what's got to offer so here we go so we jumped off our boat and headed up towards the pool area taking in these views this area is definitely really nice and worth stopping on your trip once up at the pool area, we grabbed a seat, grabbed some drinks, and then after a while, we decided to head over to the other side of the island. Earlier today, we docked in the area, went over to the beach on the other side, courtesy of the hotel. Uh, fun fact, if you do pay for a slip for your boat, you also get access to the pool, the gym, and a drive to this side of the island, to the beach. And uh, now we're going out to a uh, quick dinner with the family. So here we go. All right, so we slept here docked at Scrub Island with the marina here last night. A little bit of a rocking your sleep, if you will. <laughs> now it's nice and sunny this morning, so a little bit of rain shower, eating some brekkie, and we're gonna head out on our adventure on day four of our BBI vacation here. So let's go. So there was a convenience store here at the marina, so we wanted to restock our provisions. So we grabbed some more fresh water, ice, toilet paper, some fruit, veggies, and some meats to have to hold this over until our next stop. We had now been on the boat for three full nights and waking up here in the marina felt great. We really felt like we started to hit our stride. We got used to living accommodations, sleeping on the water, and everything that comes with living on a boat. And there's many things you might not expect. But we will share those details as we go further here, exploring with us in the BBI. Here we are getting dropped off in Virgin Gorda, the harbor here, and we're going to get our rental car and we're going to go explore the island for the day. So let's do it. Here we are with the group. We just parked our van, spoke to the lovely lady at the admissions point, and we're headed down the uh, cacti filled path to the baths. So, what she was saying today that it's not too high. She says around a knee level, but it starts to kind of raise a little bit higher than that. Definitely take care and that you can bring your knapsack and your sunnies and your hat if you want to, because it's not too bad. But from actually watching some other YouTubers videos out there, I've seen there's certain parts of the year where you can't go down there. And also with the tides changing, it's just not safe. But she said today's good. So here we go. Looking forward to it. My uh, rents went there a couple years back. So it'll be fun to go there this time with the family and check it all out. behind us as the wind whips up here. I hope you guys can still hear me. This is our first stop on the beginning of our hike and then eventually we'll get over to the baths. So yeah, take another look there. I'm gonna go jump in the water now. Here we go. The start of the baths, walking through these different rock formations and it was a lot more cool or epic, you might say, than I had imagined. Uh, 
other staircases like this going up, other ones dropping down, other areas we drop down holding onto a rope like this, but also fixed to the rock, going into the rocks more so. So it's definitely a fun adventure, definitely worth your while, and hopefully you guys enjoy coming along with us. some of these green arrows here to let you know which way to go so you don't get off of the trail here in the caves and yeah having two hands might help but uh just watch your footing and should be good sometimes you got these ropes down here different points to help out So as you can see, as we drop down further, there were some more points like this where you were sometimes knee or chest deep in the water. And it was fun. It was fun just to kind of explore around at some different dead ends, go through different passageways. If you are somebody that's claustrophobic, you might not like some of these tighter passageways, as you can see here, or in the upcoming photos, you're kind of just squeezing through. But if you do enjoy those things, if you do enjoy kind of exploring around, it is a fun time during the afternoon to just kind of go mess around, kind of play hide and seek, if you will. And then towards the end, we pop out towards the beach coming up. Just relax there for a bit, grab some food, drinks, and then we headed back to the parking lot. So we just finished the baths, went to Poor Man's Bar, got some Karib, which are nice, easy drinking beers. And uh, now we're leaving that area, headed back up to the van, and we're going to be headed to Hog Heaven for lunch. So we'll see you guys there. Let's go. So at this point, we were all really hungry, and we were ecstatic to be at Hog Heaven for these views and for this food. I myself got some pulled pork, as did most everybody else there, in either a sandwich or a plate form. We ate our food, enjoyed the drinks, took in the views. As you guys can see from the deck right here, how windy it was as well. And then we jumped in the car and headed down to meet our captain at Leverett Bay. So we arrived at Leverett Bay. We dropped off our rental car there in the lot. And as you guys can see, it's a pretty built up area here at the port. We would be staying here a few nights later, but today we'll be moving over to our dinghy and our captain will be taking us back to our boat to go find our mooring ball. <music> So we just found a mooring ball over here, number 23. We got Saba Rock behind us there. We decided to move over this way because it's a little more protected from the wind. Just past Byers Creek up that way. And yeah, we're all gonna get on our digging now, head over to try to catch happy hour. And I think it's a tarpon showing or a tarpon feeding showing over by Saba Rock. So here we go. <laughs> here at Saba Rock. I've been hearing a ton about this over the years for my family. We finally made it. I'm trying my first painkiller here and we're gonna have dinner here shortly. We're gonna bring you guys along. Cheers. stops here at nighttime for the tarpon feeding and this is what just transpired and there's still a bunch of these big boys and girls hanging out right down there which is pretty cool now we're gonna go check out the rest of the premises here we're gonna go catch up with the group and this new place really is beautiful they did a great job supposedly according to one of the youtubers out there i'll link uh her stuff down below she was saying that these uh, wraps around the pipes here took a one guy a year to do, so it's pretty cool and a lot of work. And I'm gonna go join these guys right now. Just took our dinghy back to our boat, and that wraps up today. Second to last 
last day on the boat, and we're sitting out here in our warm bowl with supper. check out Bitter and Yacht Club for lunch. We might go check out the Sabah Rock area, possible oil in that bay. We're gonna see what the wind looks like, how choppy the seas are, and make our decision from there. So we mentioned earlier we get back to talking about the boat. So here we go. Are you ready for an uh, on-boat bathroom tour? About five days in now and getting used to the amenities here and now we're gonna show you what it looks like. And this view comes to you compliments of your bathroom. <laughs> the sink. The shower space. You actually also do have this protector here to cover your ceiling. If you want to, you can open this guy up, get yourself some air. Toilet area here. You've got the eco on your left. Middle is normal, empty is empty. So eco is a little bit of water, normal is a good amount of water, empty is just to empty your bowl. And then basically, that is what you deal with with going to the bathroom on a boat. And here you've got your TP, your scrubby, and your bin. And that is the bathroom tour all on deck. And actually, one last thing, one last thing. You actually have space in there to put any of your medicine stuff or toiletries. And then you have your on off light buttons up there and some hooks up that way. So nice and very well thought out bathroom tour. So this is the first day on a trip we really had some extra time just to kind of chill out and explore. So we took the dinghy towards Byers Creek Resort to go check that out. Unfortunately, you were not able to dock there because they're still doing construction to the resort. After that, we then jumped back on our main boat, headed past Saba Rock, which you'll see here, and over towards Oil Nut Bay. We explored around there and come take a look. All right, so we decided to take our Marine Max 44 out to Oil Nut Bay which is right over here. They're currently working on a lot of the new places there because back in 2017, the big hurricane through here. So we docked here at Oil and Bay Resort and some of our family members got to go explore the whole resort. I did not get to do so, but the silver lining there was I was able to get a lot of good drone shots of this side of the area. So you guys can see here what this area looks like as well as up over the ridge here towards Saba Rock, that little dot in the middle. This is what it would look like if you were staying in that area, and it is beautiful. So we're just touring the grounds here with the Bitter and Yacht Club. They've been doing some rebuild on it over the last couple of years after the big storm in 2017 here in the BBI. And yeah, it looks beautiful. Hope you guys enjoy the B-roll you saw so far. We'll continue showing you some more here. Just left the Bitter and Yacht Club and the food was great. Probably one of the best places we've eaten so far on our five day boating tour on Marine Max here in the BBI. And we just had lunch there. We went around the grounds. Really beautiful. It's really nice what they've done there, the renovation after the storm back in 2017. Now we're uh, trying to anchor here in front of Prickly Pear Island, just a little west of the Biran Yacht Club to go do some swimming and uh, check it out. So come along with us. So we put the anchor down right here by Prickly Pear Islands and we swam in. We hung out for a bit. There were a bunch of other people there because the cruise ship was nearby. Got back on our boat, just enjoyed the weather. And then eventually we headed over towards our slip at the marina in Leverick Bay. strong here so it's way too hard to hear me so basically we docked in Lubbock Bay this evening 
to see the show, the Jumbies, and really just check out the ambiance. My family had experienced before and wanted to show it to us as well. Let's get this party started, man. So having not lived on a boat before, I got a kick out of and loved the hatches or vents above. I feel like mostly everybody used it to kind of get some fresh air in their rooms, but you could also kind of use it to uh, pop your head up and scope out the area. And or if you can fit, you can actually wiggle through and pop yourself up on the outside out on deck. We are on day six this morning here in Leverick Bay Marina. We got our boat just behind me over here, Remax 44. The wind was whipping that morning at the marina there at Leverick Bay. Basically, we just got out, kind of everybody did some grocery shopping, checked out the shops again, kind of walked around in the marina there. It was a cool experience. It was only my second time having stayed in a marina after our first time at Scrub Island, second time being Leverick Bay. <laughs> We are on day six, our last full day of the Marine Max 44. We're just heading into King Garden Bay here. We stopped up at Monkey Point before, tried to do some snorkeling, tried to find some fishies. Not much to see there. Hung out for a bit. Now we'll be arriving here in King Garden Bay and staying here tonight. Just uh, got off the uh, dinghy from our boat and walking around on King Garden Bay. We're gonna go look at the shops, look at the food, drinks, and we'll see what we get into. So we walked up and down the beach taking in the views and we went to Myatt's for lunch. Shortly after that, a bunch of us jumped in the sea and then we took notice of these birds. You've got to check this out. After enough time swimming around and it was time to head back to the boat, took a nice little shower, check this out, one of the cool perks on the boat, and then we all got showered up, watched the sunset, and then headed back on land to go to Myatt's for dinner and some nice live music. <laughs> So day seven, we are leaving King Garden Bay, which is behind me over there. Go straight to Yost Van Dyke. Today we're dropping the boat off, moving over to the rental car, and we'll be staying at White Bay Villas on Yost Van Dyke. The last part of our stay here in the BBI. Everyone, hopefully you guys had a ton of fun exploring the BBI with us on a Marine Max 44. If you did, feel free to check out our other video over here, which is our perfect Yost Van Dyke experience, which is the second portion of our trip. Really enjoyed that. So whether you're looking to be on the boat the whole time or do a mix like we did of the boat and land time, the perfect Yost Van Dyke experience, again, linked up here, was a really good kind of chilled out experience after moving around each day on the Remax 44. Comment down below if you know of more information yourself to share with the travel community. Also, BVI Live is a great resource for us. Check that out on Facebook. A ton of people will comment there. It's a good resource overall for your experience, especially during these changing times of the new travel worlds. And if you guys enjoyed today, check out our new Patreon account. So there's two tiers, one and two. First one is a donation just to keep this channel going. We really appreciate that. And the second one is if you guys want to be more interactive with us, that's a little bit higher tier, but you guys will have an online call with us every single month to talk about traveling the world, different destinations, as well as hiking the world. So really want to interact with you all. So check out the Patreon link. It'll be down below in the description. You guys know what to do until the next video. Do not forget to explore more. We'll see you there. Hey everyone, thanks so much for making it this far. A quick bonus tip for those of you who did is go to Anagata Island. We did not have time on our itinerary, but I highly suggest making that one of your stops in the BVI.